Hello, today we're going to be looking at uh, all of the problems for the fundamental theorem of line integrals, which have come up on past finals. So just as a, as a recap, the fundamental theorem of line integrals states that if we're dealing with a conservative vector field, so a vector field, sorry, a vector field that has some potential function uh, whose gradient is the vector field that we're looking at. If, if this condition is true, then the potential function, if we can find it, evaluated at our endpoint and evaluated our, at our start point, just evaluating this like a normal, uh, almost like the, the ending of an integral, uh, we will end up with um, our answer here, which in this case is uh, f dot dr, which can be thought of as the work done by that vector field over the path. And this is path independent. That's why we can use uh, just an endpoint and a start point. It doesn't matter. Let's say we have a point A and a point B. Uh, f dot dr, as long as we're in a conservative vector field, uh, will be the same if we take this path or if we, you know, any, any, any other path that we, we choose to take, f dot dr will be constant. So with that in mind, we can go take a look at these. I think we have uh, six problems to do. And uh, let's see. So we are given uh, the information that this, uh, this first question, that this is a, a conservative vector field. It says that there is a potential function such as such that the gradient of that potential function is some vector field. Uh, that's a function of x, y, and z. And we see that that vector field is equal to y, z, x, z, x, y. And we know that in order to find our potential function, because each of these components is a partial derivative of that potential function. So this component is fx, this component in the middle here is fy, and this component is fz. We're able to take the integrals of these terms uh, with respect to whatever position in the vector that they're in, in order to find what our potential function is. So taking our first integral, integral uh, yz dx, we get xyz plus c. Over here, integral xz dy, we will get xyz plus c. And over here, we are taking the integral yx dz, and we get x, y, z plus c. Now, there, it's, it's good to notice that there's a plus c on the end here, but for our purposes, it doesn't matter at all um, because as, as, as it's a constant, it will be uh, uh, can canceled out over the process if we, choose to, if we choose to keep it in there. So now that we have our three uh, partial, uh, sorry, our three integrals, we can see that they all overlap so our function, our potential function, is just going to be x, y, z. So now, with that in mind, we'll make a little bit more space here, and we can figure out what uh, our starting and end points are. So our start point is going to be, uh, uh, so r of t with the initial value of t plugged in. And we can kind of form r of t. That would be, that would be a good thing for us to look at. So r of t, the vector r of t is t cubed, 1 plus t squared, 1 plus t squared. And so we see that we're beginning at t equals 0 and ending at t equals 1, so we can plug those in. So our start point for t equals 0, that's going to be 0, 1, 1, and our end point is going to be 1, two, four. And so we know that in order to find what f dot dr is for our, for our line integral up here, all we have to do is take our potential function, which in this case is x, y, z, and evaluate it at 1, 
comma 2 comma 4 and then subtract from that 0 comma 1 comma 1 and we see that this is 8 this is 0 and our answer is 8 moving on another uh, conservative vector field they in this case they just uh, write it out but th that statement that it is a conservative vector field is exactly the same as what we saw up here where they're saying that find uh, a, a potential essentially a potential function f of x y z such that the gradient of f is our force field so just keeping that in mind uh, so we see that we are moving from some point p to another point q so we know that overall uh, what we are going to be evaluating is f on q minus f on p and so we are given our force vector which is f of x comma y and that's equal to y e to the x y x e to the x y plus cosine y so just like before we can take our antiderivatives and we see that the antiderivative with respect to, to x is or sorry yes the antiderivative with respect to x is e to the x y and over here the antiderivative with respect to y is e to the x y plus sine y and so we're looking for overlap in here so we see that there's an overlapping term and then one term on its own so all everything that's uh, overlapping we only count once so our overall potential function is going to be e to the x y plus sine y and then we're evaluating this on p and q and they're nice to us here uh, they, they're just giving us x and y values so instead of p and q we can replace this with 0 comma 2 and 1 comma 0 as ordered pairs and we know what f is now so we can replace f with e to the x y plus sine y and now can and now we can evaluate so in both of these cases e to the x y is going to be 0 because one of our terms is 0 so 1 in both cases and in this lower case uh, y is 0 so sine of y we know to be 0 so 1 plus 0 whereas sine of y up, so sine of uh, 2 up here is just sine of 2 and so 1 plus sine of 2 minus 1 is just sine of 2 okay so here we have another another case uh, where it's very useful to know the the fundamental theorem of line integral, integrals but they don't really give you any that much of a hint that it's a conservative vector field um, you you kind of have to figure it out on your own although if you see this kind of thing on the exam where they're asking you to you know do one two three four uh, different parametrizations and, and line integrals it's very likely that you, you you'll be able to uh, cut some time off because in reality all of the problems on the exam can be done in a rel relatively short amount of time so uh, just if we were just to look at this question on an exam uh, without ever seeing it before uh, seeing this kind of complexity would lead us to believe that it's a conservative um, conservative vector field uh, so that we can use a fundamental theorem uh, but let's just check to make sure so we have f of x y z and that's equal to y e to the x e to the x and 2 z so we know we can take our antiderivatives and see what overlaps to make our uh, potential function and we see that the antiderivative with respect to x in this first case is y e to the x the antiderivative with respect to y is going to be y e to the x and the antiderivative with respect to z is going to be z squared we see that we have overlap and that uh, none of our no oh, sorry yes so we see that we have we have overlap here so we know that our potential function 
f is going to be y e to the x plus z squared. Okay, um, so now we know we have our potential function. All we have to do is evaluate y e to the x plus x plus, sorry, z squared on our starting and ending points. Well, our, first, our starting point is 0, 0, 2, and our ending point is 0, 3, 0. So evaluating, you see that this is equal to 4, and this is equal to 3. So, oops, sorry, 3 minus 4 is negative 1. Okay, question 13. We are given our force field in terms of x and y, and we know that it's a, it's a conservative vector field to begin with because they're telling us that f is the gradient of some potential function, f. I'll just... We know that this here is true, so it's a conservative vector field, so we can use the fundamental theorem of line integrals. We know that we need uh, to find this function f so we can take our antiderivatives. We see that our first antiderivative is going to be 3x plus x squared y, and then our second is going to be x squared y minus y cubed. So, seeing our overlap, we don't want to count that twice. Our overall potential function is going to be x squared y plus 3x minus y cubed. And now we need a starting and ending point. Well, we're given things in terms of uh, uh, t over here. Our x and y are in terms of t. So, plugging in 0 for each of these, we're going to get 0, 1, and plugging in pi into both of these, we are going to get, yes, uh, sorry, we're going to get e to the pi sine of pi, which is just 0, and we're going to get e to the pi cosine of pi, which is negative 1, so e to the negative pi. So now, evaluating, we're starting at 0, comma 1, and we are ending at 0, comma, negative e to the ne whoops, negative pi. And by negative pi, I mean positive pi. There we go. And plugging in, we see that this down here is equal to negative 1. And up here, we have e to the 3 pi. So subtracting we get e to the 3 pi plus 1. Okay, the vector field uh, here is conservative. Another nice one where they actually let us know. Compute the work done by the field and uh, by the field in moving an object along the path C, where C is R of T from 0 to pi. So we'll take our antiderivatives. And we'll find that our first is x squared e to the y plus x. And our second is x squared e to the y. Okay, so noticing that we have overlap here, which, which we should, and that there's a lone x, we can form our potential function, which is x plus x squared e to the y. Okay, we need our starting and ending points. We can plug those in up here to find them. Uh, for t is equal to 0, r of t is 1, 0. For t is equal to pi, r of t is negative 1, 0. So we know to evaluate this on negative 1, 0 and subtract it, evaluate it on 1, 0. And plugging in anything with a y in it uh, is going to going to be 0. So in this case, e to the y is always going to be 1. And so negative 1 plus negative 1 squared is 0. And 1 plus 1 squared is 2. So negative 2 it is. And that's it. Hopefully that was a good, uh, good 
not so much introduction, but uh, walk through on how to how to do these problems. And uh, this is actually the first video I'm making for uh, finals, so it's it's very weird to think that I'm talking to way more people than uh, I I assumed before when I made uh, the exam two videos. But it's great. I, uh, all the feedback is very encouraging, and I hope this kind of this kind of stuff is uh, uh, helpful. Yeah.